welcome back to another video. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to have a little bit more of an unscripted, a bit more of a candid time. Because I've got a photo that I'm going to edit, we're going to do it together, we're going to use Lightroom, we're going to use Photoshop, we're going to take this really quite far because sometimes you can learn something from doing that. I like to do this sometimes, really push my editing to kind of the extreme. And what do I learn from doing that? We're gonna find out, hopefully it's something. Let's dive into Lightroom. I've got this photo here. Now this is taken on the A7R5, which is a really beautiful photo, which means we've got a lot of resolution here to play around with. But when I had the camera, the weather was not particularly interesting. This is a reasonably flat, light kind of day and just not the most amazing time to take a photo. But I took this photo anyway, this is up on the South Downs, looking down onto this village that's kind of nestled into the hills here. We've got the sea in the background, then we've got the sky. But I wanna lean into the slightly more bleak, slightly more gray weather that we have been having. And we're gonna edit it in that way. So we're gonna start off in Lightroom, and then we're gonna take into Photoshop, we're gonna do some sky replacement stuff. We're gonna do a few things. Now, something that's interesting about this is this is a JPEG shot, not a RAW shot. I almost always would shoot RAW, but sometimes with new cameras, especially if I have them before they're released, we don't have the actual RAW codec or whatever it is in Lightroom yet for it to be able to actually process it. So it needs to process it in, as a JPEG, which means I have to shoot it as a JPEG. So we're a little bit limited, I'll be honest with you, we're replacing the sky anyway. That's part of the reason we're gonna do that because, you know, if I, first up, just show you this. If we just bring that highlight down and bring the exposure down and stuff, you can see the sky starts to fall apart a little bit. So we're limited a little bit that way. It's fine. I don't mind at all because we'll replace it. It's fine, it's 2022, we can do loads of stuff. Let's jump in and start doing it. So first up, we're gonna do a global edit on Lightroom. That's why we do the entire photo, we affect things like highlight shadows, all that kind of stuff. And I will bring the highlights down, I'll probably bring the shadows down a little bit as well. I'm gonna bring that clarity up, texture. A little bit of vibrance, but I'm gonna bring the saturation down as well. And I'm just gonna bring that temperature down just a touch. Now we don't do too much with that because since it's a JPEG, it will start to fall apart a little bit quicker than if it was raw. We can't affect the actual kind of color temperature too much on JPEG. You can do a little bit, you can get away with, you can actually get away with quite a bit on a JPEG but we don't wanna push it so far it starts falling apart. Now we're gonna come down, I'm actually gonna just come in here with the tone curve and just darken the shadows just a little bit. Make this a little bit, a little bit moodier, a little bit of contrast there and see how we feel about it. I think it's looking okay so far. The hue and the saturation, I'm gonna just bring the oranges and the yellows down a little bit to make them a bit richer. The greens, I wanna keep that as nice and green and the blues, I'm gonna not touch too much, but I'm gonna bring them towards the aqua just a little bit. I'm gonna leave the color grading. I'm gonna click on auto, see what it does here for the transform. And I think that's just straightened out that horizon, which is exactly what we want. Let's pop a little bit of a vignette on here as well. And then let's just bring the red primary towards the orange, the blue primary towards the teal. Pretty sort of standard stuff to be honest with you. Nothing super exciting just yet. What I am gonna do is come back up and just bring that exposure down a little bit, just darken the photo. And then we're gonna come up here to the masking. Now, first up, let's select the sky. Just because we are gonna change the sky out doesn't mean we don't wanna do a little bit of work on that sky. Let's bring the exposure down, the highlights down, and that dehaze up. You can see it's starting to fall apart a little bit up here, but I think it's important to do that now because we're gonna have a better reference point for when we change the sky. Let's go ahead and add a new mask, which we can do by just clicking here. We're gonna go radial gradient. What I'm gonna do is just pop that over the, uh, the little village here. Now I've already got an idea of the kind of thing I wanna do. I wanna have sun rays coming out of some dark clouds directly onto the village. If you've seen previous work, if you've been watching this channel for, I don't know, I think the last couple of years probably, you'll know maybe what I'm talking about. We've done previous edits where we've done similar sort of stuff with a farmhouse. I wanna do it here as well, because I think this is gonna look really good. So what I wanna do is essentially make it as if the light is just hitting this area. So we've popped a nice radial grain on there, nice and feathered. I've bumped the exposure up. I'm gonna bring the dehaze down a little bit. I'm gonna bring the contrast up a little bit as well just to affect that. The temperature, I'm just gonna make it a little bit warmer. And then I'm gonna do another one just here, a radial gradient, which I'll just put onto this hill. Again, let's just bring that exposure up a little bit. Let's create another mask, radial gradient, Let's put one onto this hill. So what I'm doing is basically making patches of light 
falling onto these areas. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make a brush adjustment, really bring that exposure down, but let's bring that flow down as well to something like 55, and then paint in around some of these areas to darken them a little bit. We don't have to go too crazy with it, but I think that this can be quite helpful for creating a feeling of painting light into the photo, which is a really good way of editing, actually, especially if you've got a very flat photo like this, where we might want to change things up. Right, I think that looks pretty good. Let's look at where we were before we started this. So this is where we started from, and this is where we've got to already. Not bad, actually, quite a decent sort of edit so far. We're gonna right click, and we're gonna go edit in Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop's gonna open up, we're gonna load this in, and this is where we're really starting to start getting a little bit, a little bit spicy with this edit. So we've got the photo open here in Photoshop. The first thing I'm always gonna do when I come into Photoshop like this is just select that background layer and press Control J. That means we've got a duplicate of our layer. We've always got one at the bottom, which we can always come back to that is nice and clean, untouched, if something was to go wrong. When we're working with Photoshop, sometimes it can be a little bit destructive. And if we do end up with a problem that we can't come back from, we've always got this layer just at the bottom, so it's not gonna be a problem. I mean, it's always in Lightroom as well, so it's really not that much of an issue, but it's just a good habit to get into to just have a nice clean layer at the bottom in Photoshop that you can always just come back to. Otherwise, the first thing we're gonna do is come up here to edit. We're gonna go sky replacement, and we're gonna pick a sky. Now you can see I've already been playing around with this. When you click this, a nice little box will open up like this. Uh, Photoshop is actually gonna mask out the sky, and then we are gonna be able to select what sky we'd like to replace it with. In this case, this is the sky I'd like to use, but if you just click on this drop down, there's lots of different skies here. Maybe we could go for something like this one, for example, which is, is pretty cool. I mean, it's an interesting looking sky, but it's not the one I wanna use. This is the one I wanna use because we've got this light ray coming down right onto the village. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just scale this up a touch as well, because what we're gonna do is actually just shift that edge up a little bit because you can see it's affecting the sky, sorry, affecting the sea over here, which we don't want it to do. We're also gonna just brighten it a little bit like so. Not too much, but just a little bit. Now down here, you've got foreground adjustments. This is gonna affect the actual part of the image here that we've got. We can affect the foreground lighting, edge lighting, and color adjustment. I'm gonna turn those all the way up because it's gonna help, I think, with applying this sky to things. Let's go ahead and click OK, and it's output to a new layer in a group. I can close that group up. So with the sky in there, there's a few things we now need to do. We need to kind of blend our foreground in better with this sky, and then I wanna do a few things to accentuate this light coming down. First up, let's make a new curves adjustment. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna bring the curves down a little bit like so. We wanna make this nice and dark like so, and then we're gonna take the layer mask of the curves adjustment, press Control I, makes it all black. That means that nothing is revealed from that curves adjustment. And with the paintbrush, let's make white our color that we're gonna paint on. We are going to actually just paint that in. Now, when you paint white onto a layer mask like this, you are revealing whatever's on that layer. So in this case, we're revealing that curves adjustment, and I wanna paint that in around these sort of beams of light we've got coming down, and also, around our sort of village there as well. So we've darkened everything up. If I turn that off and back on, we've really darkened that up around the village just to really accentuate the light hitting this particular village. And if I was actually to come into the curves adjustment here, I can still adjust that a little bit further if I want to and just make it even a little bit darker and I can still paint on as well. So. We've got a lot of control about how we want this to look. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. I just wanna make sure this foreground is nice and dark as well, because you know we don't want it stealing anything away from the focal point, which is this village and the beam of light coming down to hit it. We could even go in for another curves adjustment that we're actually gonna to use to brighten. And again, control I on that layer mask, and let's paint white over here and over our little village. So we're just really accentuating some of these beams of light here to brighten that up. Brilliant, I think that was pretty good. Now we can see where we started by holding Alt and clicking on this little eye of the original layer. So this is what it looked like when we came into Photoshop, and this is already 
what this looks like now. The next thing I'm gonna to do to marry these two elements together, the sky and then the foreground, is actually color them both with one color grade. Now the easiest way to do that is come down here to adjustment layers and just go for color lookup. We're gonna do two here. We're actually gonna go for drop blues, which is gonna remove the blues from the image. Let's bring the opacity of that layer down a little bit. And then let's go for another color lookup. This time, let's go for film stock which is gonna add a really interesting look to things. Again, we wanna bring that opacity down quite a bit there. And I think that that looks pretty good. We might wanna just adjust that drop blues and even the film stock a little bit as well. Now, I'm not gonna to lie to you. This photo, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen as a fully edited thing, has gone pretty far in the editing process. We have taken this really quite far. This is not how much I would normally edit a photo like this, but I think it's a really interesting exercise to see where we can get to, how we can get there, all of the different things we can do, because it, for me at least, makes me look out for different things when I'm actually taking photographs. When I'm out shooting, whether it's landscape, portrait, whatever it might be, I can think about a lot of these things that I would look for in a final photo. And even though I wouldn't actually edit it to this level and take it this far, I think it's a pretty interesting way of looking at what's important in a photo, in this case, light and contrast and stuff like that, and really learning a little bit about what's gonna matter when you go to take photos in the future. And every now and then, I like to see how far I can take a photo and see also where my kind of line is for editing. For example, sky replacement. I know that even within this community, there's people who don't have a problem with it, and then there's people who definitely would never do it. I don't know where I stand. I, I go back and forth all the time. Most of the time, I would wanna keep a photo as it was. But then I do like to do quite a lot of dodging and burning, whether it's landscape or portrait or whatever it might be, I will affect the light quite heavily in an edit. So I'd love to know what you think. What do you think about where the line is? It's always very interesting to me where different photographers like to draw the line in terms of editing and kind of where you like to pull back and stop and not go any further. So let me know down in the comments. I always love to hear that kind of stuff. Of course, there's a list of all the kit used for this photo and this video and all this kind of stuff down in the description. So you can go and check that out for yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video because there's new videos all the time. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>